Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we're here today doing a bit of a Titanfall 2 discussion. Not a live commentary today, I want to talk about a few of the changes that were made with the most recent patch. And let's actually start by diving headfirst into everything that happened with attrition. This is the very first time that I feel Respawn needs to, as quickly as possible, revert or go ahead and release a hotfix for a set of changes that were made in a patch. Everything that happened with attrition just needs to be flipped back to the way it was as soon as possible. The problem here is that there's no real value added to attrition by making the matches last longer. In fact, making the matches last longer simply brings out more quitters. Titanfall 2 already comes across as a more casual pick up and play experience. When you boot up TF2, you don't have quick match and ranked play. Everybody just kind of jumps in and starts playing, right? You know, that's just the way the game is. It feels very much like Call of Duty in that regard. You just jump in, you start playing a match. A lot of people play for themselves. And because there's no harsh punishment for leaving a match, people quit as soon as things start going south. As soon as they run into that guy who's constantly killing them with the G2 or the whole team's got tones, they all go ahead and quit regardless of where the scoreboard is for their team or for the other team. Some people quit just because their team is losing. Quitting has always been something we've had to deal with inside of Titanfall 2. At least one to two people quit just about every single match I play of attrition. And now that a match can last anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes, that's about like two to three minutes longer than it did before, quitting is happening far more often. Again, we just have to ask ourselves, where is the value in making a match of attrition last longer? For me, it's also the fact that it doesn't really fit with the style of Titanfall 2. Again, this is just a more pick up and play experience we have going on here. There's no ranked and a large portion of the community was completely against ranked because they like that sort of just casual pick up and play for fun experience. So drawing matches out past that 10, 11 minute mark doesn't do anything but bring out the bad in people. You know, this isn't Battlefield. People aren't expecting a 15, 20 minute match. They want to sit down, play for 10, 12 minutes, and then be able to walk away and go do something else or play another match with their friends. They want the matches to start and finish. And they don't want to have it feel like they remember where the midway point was. You know, this doesn't need to be this up and down tug of war that you get in Battlefield. It just doesn't fit the style of Titanfall 2. And again, it's bringing out a lot of quitters. It, it's making attrition a place that no one really wants to be. And that is the last thing that a game like Titanfall 2 in its current state needs. I mean, we're a year on at this point. You know, 6,000 players is like the peak for Xbox One. We don't suddenly need people to be dropping like flies because the last bastion of Titanfall 2's game modes, attrition, where everybody knew they could get a match in 30 seconds to a minute, is slowly dying out because of quitters. Because attrition was suddenly lengthened. You know, all the changes that were made to attrition made the matches longer. Higher point score requirement, longer match timer, and I know I misspoke on this yesterday, Reapers are worth less points than they were before. These are changes that I just don't understand, and regardless of what Respawn thought they would do, it's very clear that they're doing nothing but bringing more negative experiences per individual to the Titanfall 2 experience. It's something I'd love to see them change as soon as they possibly can, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Let's move on though, get a little bit more cheerful, and talk a little bit about the Flatline. So the Flatline got a little bit of a buff yesterday, and I'm all on board with this. You know, the recoil reduction, I think was a, was a pretty big deal for that gun. But I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into this, and I wanted to go the route of fun. Let's, let's all put our differences aside when it comes to how we think the game should be balanced, because you know, we all in our heads, we all have the right answers. We, we all understand that. We all tend to disagree on these things. But the game is a year on now. All right, let's, let's get real with ourselves. Anything we say doesn't really matter anymore. Let's just talk about the things we would have liked to have seen happen with some of our favorite weapons, the positions we would have liked to see those weapons occupy, perhaps. And I've been thinking a lot about the flatline, because while it does feel substantially better since the most recent patch, I think there was a point in time a long time ago where the flatline maybe, maybe was in the golden position that I've always wanted it to be in. You know, that sort of ability for the flatline to fill a very specific role, one where it's not the king of all of the rifles in the game, but one where I feel like I have a good reason to pick the flatline over the R2, for example, if I'm willing to modify my gameplay. 
So there was a point in time when the flatline, right before it got nerfed for the first time, hit pretty hard. It had substantial recoil, but you could tap fire it and you could get away with some pretty, pretty long range kills. It felt like a fun weapon to use. It felt like it really fit the theme of its design, that sort of AK bullpup experience. And the horizontal recoil, I think definitely added to that theme, definitely added to the experience of the weapon. But very quickly, it was nerfed. And it suddenly became a weapon that simply was never as good as other weapons you could be picking, especially the R2 and eventually the R101 variant. That rifle always seemed to reign supreme. It was always the weapon where you said to yourself, yeah, I can get kills with this gun. I can get kills with the flatline, but I know I can do it better and more consistently with the R2. It still kind of feels that way. You know, the R2, I think, still beats out the flatline in close quarters. It still beats it out for accuracy and range. It still is the better weapon. And again, there's nothing wrong with that because I think if we take a look at the projectile-based weapons, for example, you know, the Cold the cold War and the Softball, these are weapons that you can have fun with. They're weapons that really do, I think, make Titanfall 2 the enjoyable experience it is for so many of us. But they also fill a very specific role. The Softball, for example, is, you know, one-hit kill weapon. If you can stick people with it, you can get crazy kill streaks. And if you can stick a group of people with it, you can get awesome multi-kills. You know, that's something that you can't really do with a weapon that needs to be reloaded after it kills two people, you know, with the R2 or the flatline even. The Cold War can rain death from above. Again, it fits a very specific role. The flatline just doesn't feel like it does that though. So for me, I always envision the flatline being a gun with even heavier recoil than it's ever had before, like substantial recoil, but it hits so hard that you can tap fire it. You'd have to be quick and you'd have to get the jump on the player, but more importantly, it would reign supreme in, you know, really close quarters engagements where you could get your spray on. You could do heavy bursts and just tear down enemies. Maybe even give it a shorter magazine and just make it this really unique and really diverse weapon selection. That That's always been my dream for that gun, you know, like cut the magazine size in half even and make it this just fun, you know, really short mag bullpup AK variant that hits like a truck, but that is so hard to use in full auto situations because of the short mag and because of the recoil at long range. I just think that would be so freaking cool, man. That, that's my perfect vision for the flatline. That's my like, who knows if it would even work, but it sounds really cool to me. And from my experiences with the flatline and with first person shooters over the years, that's something that I would like to have seen happen with that gun. So let me know guys, I'd love to hear from you. Pick whatever weapon, you know, you've kind of thought about, or maybe it's always been in the back of your head, or maybe you just start thinking about it today. And let me know what your perfect buff would be for it. We're not here to talk about the weapons we want nerfed. We're not here to complain about the Devotion and the Hemlock and the G2. Let's talk about the weapons in the game that we've always loved, but that we've always felt never really got to see their full glory. How would you modify those weapons in terms of statistics, maybe even things like magazine size, bullet size, damage, recoil? How would you modify those things to make that weapon reach a point where it has that full glory, where it fills maybe just a specific niche but it's totally worth it for its existence within that niche. Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's have some fun with this one. Be sure to leave your thoughts on everything happening with attrition as well. How do you guys feel about the changes? Let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, remember to play smart. Remember to play to challenge yourself. But most importantly, remember to play for fun.